ناحية وكفاءة وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى ربنا يسر ولا تقصر وتمم بالخير بك نستعين يا فتاح اللهم أغننا بحلالك عن حرامك وبطاعتك عن معصيتك وبفضلك عن من سواك اللهم احفظنا من طربات الهواء اللهم طهر قلوبنا من النفاق وأعمالنا من الرياء ربنا يسر ولا تقصر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى اذهب أنت وأخوك بآياتي ولا تنيا في ذكري فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما روي عن الله تبارك وتعالى أنه قال يا عبادي إني حرمت الظلم على نفسي وجعلته بينكم محرما فلا تظالموا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, he mentions in the Qur'an when he's telling us about the story of Musa alayhi salam and how he sent Musa alayhi salam and his brother Harun to uh, Fir'aun to uh, give dawah to Fir'aun to let him know that he should stop calling himself the Lord of the world, right, the Lord most high, that he should uh, stop uh, claiming to be a god. And then he should let the the Bani Israel that he should release these these children of of Ambiya, that he should release them and let them go and stop doing the things he was doing to them. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala instructs Musa and Harun alayhi salam when he says, "Idhab anta wa akhuka bi ayati wa la tanya fi dhikri." You and your brother go to Fir'aun. With my sign, with my with my miracles, right? The staff and uh, what do you call it? The hand. Musa alayhi salam. He would put his hand. Uh, he would bring out his hand, right? And it would be it would be uh, shining white. And this wasn't like a whiteness of that it was there was some sickness with it, right? And then the staff turning into uh, what do you call this thing? Um, a snake, right? And so it's not just it turning into a snake, but there's various other um, what do you call it? The, like within it turning into a snake, there's a lot of different um, miracles that happen with that uh, inanimate objects, right, coming to life, and then things that are alive turning into inanimate objects, it increasing in size, various uh, and various other things. And so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He says that you and your brother go to fear own with my signs, and do not be negligent in my of my remembrance. Don't don't um, fall short in remembering me. And so even Kathir Rahimullah, he mentioned in his in his tafsir that Allah SWT is telling them that, you know, they should when they're facing for your own, they should right, engage themselves in the remembrance of Allah SWT. Be steadfast in remembering Allah SWT so that the, the remembrance of Allah SWT will be something that is helpful for them. And so as as we move forward, right uh, one of the things I wanted to, people to keep in mind is that uh, when we're when we're giving dawah to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, when we're um, what do you call it, in, uh, forbidding the wrong and 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 joining the good, right? Then we should also not uh, forget our connection with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, right? We should uh, still be, we should even more, right? Be working on our personal connection with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and our ibadat, right? As this will. Uh, be a means be a means of helping and lending strength uh, to what we're doing. So in the time of the Sahaba, Allah Taala, whom one of the governors of Medina, right? He was, you know, sometimes they were they were we didn't we had uh, rulers that were not uh, such great rulers. So this particular uh, governor, this particular ruler, he was he was um, as we say, he was drunk off his own power, right? And so he took the, the wealth of one of the companions unjustly, right? He violated this person's wealth. And so that companion, he told the governor that I swear by Allah, if you don't give me back my right, I, I will take up my sword. And then that, that companion, he went and stood in the masjid of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa and he invoked the hilful fudul, or the alliance of virtue. And so the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa he once mentioned 
that I was present in the house of Abdullah ibn Jud'an at the formation of such an alliance that I wouldn't like to possess red camels in exchange for this alliance. And if I was called to it in Islam, I would surely respond. Red camels being like something, uh, like they imagine like a, a, a red Ferrari or a Tesla or whatever expensive cars, right? Something something of, of, of immense wealth or immense value. So this alliance that was referred to was formed because the custodians of the Kaaba, right, the masters of the Haram, the Quraysh, they used to engage in acts of oppression in the Haram. Right? They used to they were they were taking advantage of the fact that they were uh, in control of things and so they were they were oppressing the people who would come. And because of this, Abdullah ibn Jur'an and Zubair ibn Abdul Muttalib, he stood they both stood up. And they, they they stood up, right? And they called to the they called to the the people of Mecca to the creation them to now make a pact, make an agreement that they would help one another, and they would side with the oppressed people against the oppressors. Whether those uh, oppressed people were uh, people from Mecca, or whether they were from outside Mecca, they were um, so to say like foreigners who had, who had come to to uh, to Mecca. So Allah and, and so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has ordered the believers to help the oppressed, right? This is something Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has ordered us to do. And so the Messenger of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala he said that look, if he was called to a similar pact in Islam to help the oppressed people, then he would respond to it because this is not something like contrary to the teachings of Islam. And so this companion, right? Getting back to the story, this companion he invoked this pact to help the oppressed, whoever they might be and to stand with them until their rights were restored to them. And so Abdullah ibn Zubair, who he responded, that I also swear by Allah that if he calls us, I will take up my sword and I will stand with him until he has given his right, or we all die. And so the news of this reached Al-Miswar ibn Makhrama, and he responded in a similar manner. And the news reached Abdullah ibn Uthman ibn Ubaidullah, and he responded in a similar manner. And so, like, the news of this, it reaches the ears of the governor, right? All of these people, they, they're going to uh, basically fight me until until none of us are standing, right? Unless I uh, do right by this companion. And so he decided he'd better restore that, right? He restored that companion's rights uh, to him. So it's an obligation on the Muslims to stop wrongdoing with every possible means. And joining the good and prohibiting the wrong is an obligation on every individual of the Muslim Ummah in accordance with each individual's ability. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, has said, Man ra'a minkum munkaran fal yughayyirhu bi yadi, fa illam yastati' fa bi lisani, fa illam yastati' fa bi qalbi, wa dhalika adhafu al-eeman. That is, whoever sees a wrong, fal yughayyirhu bi yadi, then let him change it with his hands. If they're not able to do that, if they're not able to do that, then they should stop it with their tongue. If they're not able to do that, then they should dislike this thing in their heart. And he says, This is the weakest form of faith. And so here the scholars mention that he's not talking about um, Iman in the, in the sense of, you know, like a person's, um, what they're believing in. But in the term of terms of in terms of the physical actions a person does, right? Then this would be the lowest form of, of physical action that a person uh, could do. So some scholars have called this hadith half of the divine law, the Sharia, and others have said that this is Islam in its entire in, in its entirety, because Islam is either some good act that is you know necessary for us to enjoin, or it's a wrong that we need to forbid people from. And tell them, you know, you don't do that. So this narration explains that there are two stages of preventing wrong. One is where we're stopping it with the hand and the tongue. And this is wajib and necessary in accordance with one's strength and ability. And then two is that a person should object to this, to the wrong with their heart. And so this is a fault of obligatory action on every Muslim in every state. Like there's, there's no time when you could be like, well... You know, I'm not, I'm not going to dislike it in my heart. You know, I, I can't do that right now. So some of the ulama have pointed out that using physical actions to stop wrongdoing 
is for the people who are in positions of authority. So, for example, uh, a parent a parent child situation, right? The parent has the 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 uh, what do you call it is in this position of authority and uh, seniority, where they 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 have that ability now to physically stop the wrongdoing that their child is doing. And then so so one is that uh, the person should be in a in a position of authority, right? And then uh, the second way the second way of speaking out against the wrong is for people of knowledge. And then disliking it in one's heart is for the general masses. So once a scholar, one of the scholars, scholars of the past, Yahya ibn Mu'adh al-Razi, rahimullah, he was speaking about the importance of, you know, enjoining good and forbidding wrong, Amr bin Ma'ruf and Nahyan al Munkar. And so there was a woman who said that, you know, this is an obligation we, that is the women, we haven't been burdened with this. We don't have to do that. So Yahya responded that assuming that you all don't have the weapons of the tongue in hand, the weapon of your heart has not been taken away. Right? If we cannot, within the bounds of our sphere of influence, and to the extent that we are able, stand up and physically change the wrongdoing and acts of oppression that are going on around us, and we can't speak out against it or write about it, this doesn't give us license and permission to now just do absolutely nothing. At the very least, we should hate it in our hearts. Right, we some of you may have been maybe familiar with the narration that tells us about um, the man in Bani Israel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what do you call it Jibreel alayhi salam to go and uh, destroy a particular area, a particular town, and Jibreel alayhi salam is like, Well, you know that there's there's a there's a pious guy there, right? He's like engaged in your worship and stuff. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like, you know, basically get him first, right? All this wrongdoing is going on around him. And he never even, like his face never even frowned at, you know, what was going on. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in one ayat of the Qur'an, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانُ وَجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُسِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصَّةً وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْإِقَابِ Fear and be wary and cautious of a fitna that will not solely affect those who are oppressive and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is severe in punishment. So in this ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is cautioning his slaves who have accepted the truth from a fitna, a test, and a severe trial that will be widespread and all-embracing, touching the sinners and the non-sinners. It will not come down solely on the disobedient people or those engaged in sins, Rather, it will envelop both sides in such a manner that it will not be warded off, nor will it be lifted. As the Messenger of Allah, he said, he said, that Allah SWT, without a doubt, Allah SWT, mighty and majestic as he, he will not punish the general masses due to the actions of a few. Right? Inna Allah Azza wa Jalla yu'adhibul amata until they see these the 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 what do you call it, the majority of the people the general masses until they see wrongdoing being committed in their midst and they are able to object to it to 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 stop this wrongdoing to criticize it but they don't do that. Right? So they have the ability to do it and they don't do it. When this happens, when they do this, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish, uh, he'll punish everybody, right? Both sides will catch it. And this is because, right, the general masses, it's not like people are being, you know, uh, uh, how do you say, they're, they're, so there's the the ayat wala tadiru wadira tum wizra ukhra that no uh you could call it people will not be uh punished for the for the sins of other people, right? They don't have to bear other people's burdens. Right? And so this is not what's going on that you know, okay, the general masses are being punished because of the the literally because of the sins of these other people, but each side is getting punished because of their, their own sins. So the general masses, right, the the general population they're 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 uh, being punished because right they're not doing what they're supposed to do. They're not stopping these other people from the wrong that they're doing, and that small group of people who are doing wrong, they're being punished because they're doing wrong.
So this Ummah is the heir of a great message that Allah SWT sent to humanity, to mankind, in order to take them out from these layers and blankets of darkness and bring them into the light. And so it is essential that they hold fast to the prophetic inheritance by enjoining every good thing and forbidding every wrong with full faith and hoping for reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? We can't, we cannot, uh, uh, how do we say, um, force outcomes. Like we can't decide that this is, this is the, you know, if I tell you to do so-and-so, then, you know, this is the outcome that must happen, that you must definitely stop it. But we can put in effort, right? We're responsible for the effort that we put in. And we should do this with our 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 gaze fixed on reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not, you know, uh, now looking, okay, I did so-and-so, so, you know, th th there must be an outcome, right? If you, if you do that, right, you'll... You'll get fed up, right? Look how long this the the what do you call it? The Anbiya are preaching to their people, right? Nuh alayhi salam is going out night and day. He's going in 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 the open and in secret, right? And all of the, he's making all of this effort for not like you know uh, one or two days or a couple of months or even a few years, right? He's nine hundred and fifty years. He's he's engaged in dawah and uh, calling his people to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and things reached to such an extent that, uh, what do you call it, uh, people would be passing away and as they're, as they're dying, their last will and testament to their, to their children is, you know, there's this guy named Nuh alayhi salam, um, he's crazy, don't listen to him, right? And so this, the, this next generation, right, this is, this is the advice they're getting from their dying parents. And he's, he's still going out there and giving them, calling them to the ones of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, right, we, we, we are not, um, we're not responsible for the results. We're responsible for the effort. And so Umar ibn Khattab, who he used to recite the following verse, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat min nasi ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhauna anil munkar. You are the best nation brought forth for the benefit of the people. You enjoin that which is good, and you forbid the wrong. And then, he would say, whoever is pleased that they should be from this nation, let them fulfill the condition Allah Ta'ala has put upon it. He didn't just say that you're the best nation and leave it like that, but he said, like, you know, you, you enjoin that which is good, and you forbid the wrong. There's a condition there that you have to be doing this. So, one of my, one of my, one of my friends Right, the he was a classmate of um, he's actually a classmate of my younger brother, right? He he graduated from Darlum Trinidad uh, a couple of years before me. He's advised that you know with respect to this current situation that some 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 things that we could do uh, to help out is that the uh, so he he was specifically talking to um, imams, but you know the, the advice can be made a little bit more general. That not just the imams, but the the community, the Muslim community, needs to side with the pain and anger of all of the oppressed, and you know our our discourse, our our talks, they should reflect that. And then a second thing he was advising is that we should look internally at how our communities have manifested racism, and have perpetuated it in overt and not so overt ways. So there are things that that we are doing, right, that we should be doing. And, you know, we can't go in and now point, point a finger at the, the larger American community and say, oh, you know, you have a problem with, you know, racism, right? When we, we have this problem within our own selves, right? And trust me, they'll, they'll see right through us if we, if we try and do something like that. And so three is that we should have real points to discuss on how to purge the community of, of these symptoms, right? We can't just keep uh, rehashing this this thing of you know oh you know Islam is there's no racism in Islam and Bilalullah one who was the first muadzin and you know la fadlali Arab ala ala al ajam right and there's no virtue of the of the Arab over the non Arab and right but you know Alhamdulillah that's well and good but okay so beyond that like we could look into the life of the Messenger Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right. Um, and see what what exactly did he did? So the the problem was there even even in his time, right? That what did he do to address these issues, right? How did he deal with the the Habashi, the Nubian, 
the Abyssinian, the 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 what do you call it? The 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 um the black Sahaba that were uh, around him, right? Besides just Bilal al who you had uh, other people like uh, Hadar Abi Bakarata, uh, Um Ayman, right? Um, what is his name? Bu Mikhbar, Bu Mikhmar, right? You have uh, Wahshi, right? You have all of these other companions um, around the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? See how did how did he deal with how did he deal with them? How did he treat them, right? What was the interaction of the community with them? And then now we can, you know, this is the, the, these are our these are our examples of how you know we should uh, behave in our own lives, not just with. Uh, African Americans, but just in general, in commu in mixed communities, and then even amongst our own selves, right? How we should how we should be acting, and so uh, getting back to what uh, what uh, Mala Ahmed was saying, he said that the Imam should uh, you know he should give after his after he gives his sermon that you know now now he should defer to people who have more experience in dealing with these issues than himself, right? People. Who actually have experience, or who have studied this issue, these issues in depth, right? Who who are engaged in in in, in uh, sort of say combating this this uh, problem, right? Defer to those people, right? The what do you call it? We have the the ayat of the Chronicles. One time it says, you know, fasalu ahla dikri in kuntum la ta'alamu. Ask the people of knowledge if you if you don't know, right? Somebody somebody uh, he was saying that there was there was. Uh, there was um what do you call this thing? There was a, a, a non-Muslim. He was saying, you know, that oh, you, know, you 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 really believe that the Quran has has everything inside of it? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? Tell me, tell me about a how how many how many loaves of bread can fit in fit in you know such and such bag? So he, he calls a baker, asks him how many. And he said, there's your answer. He said, wow, you said it. That's not from the Quran. He said, well, the Quran says, "Fas alu ahla dikrin kuntum la ta'lamu." Ask the you know, ask the people of knowledge, the experts. Ask them if you don't know. So, so he's saying that you know, okay, like we have this issue, right? Maybe we don't we don't have experience dealing with it, right? So defer. So we defer to people who do have experience with that, right? Go and ask the people in the African American community who've been dealing with the issue. Ask them, you know, what is it we can do? Uh, you know, how can we help out? Things of this nature. And then number four, right, the last point was that the ulama, right, and so again, he saw he, 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 his, again, he's uh, directing his, his, his uh, advice towards a particular group, but, shh, shh, but we can, um, what do you call it, make it more general. So he said that the, 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 the ulama, but you know, again, the community, that they should partner with local anti-racist groups to learn about racism, to learn what is, what is systemic oppression and how, does it, how is it manifesting uh, in America. And then also looking at American history uh, in this regard, um, finding out exactly how it is that America has gotten to the place it is now. Right and 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 so we need to be careful and um, you know we can we can look at American history but be, be critical of the of the history that we're we're looking at right um, and so then we need to join these organizations as humble workers rather than leaders and learn strategies on how to address racism in our communities. And thereafter, you know, we should follow through and and try to uh, implement these these uh, these strategies within our community. So may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give us tawfiq to uh, act upon what has been said. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala forgive us for anything wrong that we might have said, um, put benefit in it. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala make us beacons of light and means of benefit to ourselves, to our families, to the community at large. May Allah SWT use us for the khidmah of, of deen and make us uh, keys and means of, uh, what do you call it, opening doors of goodness and make us a means of, and not make us a means of, what do you call it, opening doors of evil and uh, tribulation to the people. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'ilil muslimina min kulli dhamk wa astaghfiru innahu wa lakafuru rahim.